that, you into that, I'm fine with it. To each his own. I'm just saying, just say, my mother down the pot. I like it. It's uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girls' bathroom. Get ready for a jaw-dropping revelation as 50 Cent spills the tea on Diddy's wild party antics. In an exclusive expose, the rapper-turned-entrepreneur unveils shocking footage from a party you won't believe. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of scandalous surprises as we dive into the untamed world of hip-hop royalty. Grab your popcorn, because this is one exclusive peek behind the curtain you won't want to miss. 50 Cent about Diddy. It's no secret that the music industry is filled with rivalries and feuds, but few have been as explosive and long-lasting as the one between 50 Cent and Diddy. These two rap titans have been at odds for decades, with their animosity stemming from a combination of personal and professional clashes. Today, we're diving deep into the history of their feud, exploring the events and controversies that have fueled the fire between these two larger-than-life personalities. The feud between 50 Cent and Diddy can be traced back to the early 2000s when both artists were at the height of their careers. At the time, Diddy, also known as Puff Daddy, was the reigning king of hip-hop with his bad boy records empire dominating the charts. Meanwhile, 50 Cent, a rising star from Queens, New York, was making waves with his gritty and unapologetic style. It was in this era that 50 Cent caught the attention of Diddy, who saw the young rapper's potential, and invited him to join his label, Bad Boy Records. However, what could have been a game-changing partnership quickly turned sour. I remember that meeting like it was yesterday. I walked into Diddy's office, and he started talking about all the drama surrounding the Biggie Smalls case. He said it was was too much for him to take on another controversial artist. That's when I knew this wasn't the right fit for me. And just like that, 50 Cent's hopes of signing with Bad Boy Records were dashed. But instead of backing down, he channeled his frustration into his music, releasing a series of diss tracks aimed at Diddy and his label. The feud escalated as 50 Cent accused Diddy of being a fake and a phony in his lyrics, while Diddy fired back with his own subliminal shots. The tension between them was palpable, and it spilled over into the public eye. At an award show in 2005, tensions reached a boiling point when 50 Cent and Diddy had a heated exchange on stage. The incident made headlines and further fueled the feud between the two artists. The media couldn't get enough of the 50 Cent versus Diddy saga, with tabloids and gossip blogs speculating about the reasons behind their animosity. Rumors of jealousy, business disputes, and personal vendettas swirled around the feud, but the truth remained elusive. Look, I ain't got no personal beef with Diddy. It's all about the music and the business. We just don't see eye to eye, and that's okay. But don't believe everything you read in the papers. The truth is always more complicated than it seems. Despite their differences, both 50 Cent and Diddy continued to thrive in the music industry, releasing hit after hit and solidifying their status as hip-hop icons. But the feud between them remained a constant presence, simmering beneath the surface. As the years went by, the feud between 50 Cent and Diddy became less overt, but no less intense. Subtle jabs and veiled references in interviews and social media posts kept the rivalry alive, ensuring that their names would forever be linked in the annals of hip-hop history. When it comes when it comes to throwing extravagant parties, few can rival Diddy. The hip-hop mogul is known for his lavish events, where the champagne flows, the guest list is star-studded, and the entertainment is second to none. But behind the glitz and glamour, there have been whispers and rumors about what really goes on at Diddy's parties. Over the years, Diddy's parties have become the stuff of legend, with tales of excess, debauchery, and scandal. From his annual white parties to his star-studded birthday bashes, these events have been the subject of much speculation and gossip. Let me tell you something about Diddy's parties. There they're wild, man. I've been to a few, and let's just say anything goes. It's like stepping into another world, where the rules don't apply and inhibitions are left at the door. According to insiders, Diddy's parties are known for their opulence and extravagance. No expenses spared, from the top shelf liquor to the elaborate decorations. It's a world where money is no object, and indulgence is the name of the game. Diddy's parties are on another level. You walk in and you're surrounded by celebrities, models, and influencers. It's like being in a music video or a movie. The energy is electric, and you never know what's going to happen next. But it's not just the glitz and glamour that make Diddy's parties infamous. There have been whispers of scandal and controversy surrounding these events, with rumors of illicit activities and questionable behavior. Tabloids and gossip blogs have been quick to speculate about what really goes on behind closed doors at Diddy's parties. Stories of wild orgies, drug-fueled escapades, and secret VIP rooms have circulated for years, adding to the allure and mystique of these exclusive events. Look, I can't speak for everyone, but I've been to Diddy's parties 
parties. And while there's definitely a lot of fun and excitement, I haven't personally witnessed anything too scandalous. But hey, who knows what happens when the cameras are off and the doors are closed? It's important to note that these rumors are just that, rumors. Without concrete evidence, it's impossible to separate fact from fiction. But one thing is for sure, Diddy's parties have a reputation for pushing boundaries and breaking the mold. My parties are all about creating unforgettable experiences. I want people to come in and let loose, to forget about their worries and just have a good time. It's about celebrating life and enjoying the moment. And that's exactly what Diddy's parties have become, a celebration of life, music, and the power of celebrity. Love them or hate them, there's no denying the impact these events have had on popular culture. These events have left an indelible mark on the world of hip-hop and popular culture. Whether you love them or hate them, the feuds and parties of 50 Cent and Diddy have become an integral part of their legacies. Recent Lawsuit Against Diddy in the latest chapter of Legal Woes for Sean Diddy Combs, the music mogul faces explosive allegations in an amended complaint filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. The lawsuit, initially filed on February 26, 2024, takes a dramatic turn as Jones not only accuses Combs of sexual harassment, drugging, and threats, but also claims the hip-hop icon's involvement in a 2022 shooting at a Los Angeles recording studio. Jones, a producer on Combs' recent album, The Love Album Off the Grid, alleges that from September 2022 to November 2023. He experienced a harrowing ordeal of sexual harassment, assault, and threats while under Combs' employ. The producer claims he was forced to solicit sex workers and engage in sexual acts to satisfy Combs, who, according to the lawsuit, used his influence in the music industry and law enforcement to intimidate Jones. The lawsuit goes on to describe an incident in February 2023, where Jones woke up naked, dizzy, and confused in bed with Combs and two sex workers, suggesting he may have been drugged. Jones asserts that that he possesses irrefutable evidence, including hours of video and audio recordings, showcasing Combs and his associates engaging in serious illegal activities. A significant twist in the lawsuit involves Jones's account of a shooting at Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles on September 12, 2022. Jones alleges that a heated conversation in a nearby bathroom led to multiple gunshots, and upon investigation, he found a friend identified as G lying on the restroom floor, wounded. The lawsuit contends that Combs instructed Jones to mislead the police, claiming the shooting occurred occurred outside the studio during a drive-by, contradicting LAPD reports. Contrary to the official police account, Jones insists the shooting took place inside the studio, challenging the narrative presented by Combs' attorney, Sean Hawley. The lawsuit provides screenshots and a photo, purportedly depicting the aftermath of the shooting and Combs at the studio on the night in question. The conflicting details surrounding the shooting create a complex backdrop to the broader legal battle. Jones goes a step further in his lawsuit, asserting that Combs is part of a RICO, racketeer-influenced and corrupt organization Act enterprise. This claim implies that Combs, along with others, collaborated in violating laws against organized crime. Moreover, the lawsuit alleges that Combs is involved in a sex trafficking venture, painting a damning picture of the music mogul's alleged criminal activities. The legal strategy of invoking RICO statutes adds a layer of complexity to the lawsuit, suggesting a systemic and organized pattern of criminal behavior. This, coupled with the sex trafficking allegations, intensifies the legal battle, further tarnishing Combs' public image. In a surprising turn, Turn, Jones alleges that a private investigator, allegedly linked to Combs, sought to harass and bribe a close friend for damaging information on Jones. This claim raises questions about potential attempts to discredit the producer and manipulate public perception. Jones contends that his friend, fearing for their safety, has become a target after refusing to cooperate with the alleged efforts to smear Jones. These allegations introduce a subplot that explores the lengths to which Combs, or those associated with him, may go to counter the accusations made in the lawsuit. The involvement of a private investigator adds a layer of intrigue, prompting scrutiny into the tactics employed in this high-stakes legal battle. Jones claims that he was not compensated for his work on Combs' album, despite an implied work-for-hire agreement. The lawsuit states that Jones and a recruiter agreed orally to terms that included $20,000 per song, four royalty points, producer credits, credit for each instrument played, and the retention of publishing rights. The amended complaint seeks $30 million in compensation, alleging losses of $220,000, four royalty royalty points, and producer credits for nine songs. This aspect of the lawsuit highlights the financial dimension of the dispute, suggesting a breach of agreement and failure to remunerate Jones for his contributions to the album. The intricate details of the compensation arrangement underscore the complexities of the contractual disputes within the broader legal battle. Combs, through his attorney Sean Hawley, vehemently denies all the allegations made by Jones. Hawley dismisses Jones as a liar, seeking an undeserved payday, and claims to have overwhelming and indisputable proof that 
that the accusations are complete lies. The legal team, in their response, asserts their attempts to share this proof with Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored, raising questions about the credibility of both parties in this legal showdown. Combs' denial and the strong language used by his legal team indicate a fierce defense against the allegations. The lawsuit's response suggests that the legal battle is likely to escalate, with both sides digging in for a protracted and contentious court proceeding. The recent lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs unveils a complex and multifaceted legal battle, intertwining allegations of sexual harassment, a shooting incident, involvement in organized crime, and attempts to discredit the accuser. The intricate details and conflicting narratives presented in the lawsuit create a compelling yet convoluted storyline, leaving the public and legal observers eager to see how the case unfolds in the courtroom. As both parties prepare for a protracted legal battle, the stakes are high, with potential repercussions not only for Combs' reputation, but also for the broader conversation around accountability and misconduct in the entertainment industry. The evolving narrative surrounding Sean Diddy Combs underscores the challenges and complexities of navigating legal disputes in the era of heightened scrutiny and accountability. Concerns about Diddy's sexuality Diddy's sexuality has been a subject of controversy and speculation, making it a scorching topic in recent years. People have been buzzing with questions about whether the iconic hip-hop mogul and producer is gay, and the rumors surrounding his sexual orientation continue to ignite curiosity. From the playful jabs of rapper 50 Cent to Diddy's own artistic collaborations and public statements, there are numerous shocking and sensational facts that have fueled the ongoing speculations. In the world of hip-hop, feuds and controversies are no strangers. One such ongoing Saga revolves around the relationship between Curtis Jackson, better known as 50 Cent, and Sean Combs, the iconic hip-hop mogul and producer, also known as Diddy. For years, 50 Cent has made jokes and insinuations about Diddy's sexuality, fueling the controversies and adding to the speculation surrounding Diddy's personal life. It all started with a series of public remarks made by 50 Cent, where he openly referred to Diddy as gay. The rapper, known for his provocative and often controversial statements, didn't hold back when it came to targeting Diddy. In one instance, during an interview on The Breakfast Club, 50 Cent boldly stated, Diddy is fruity. These words sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community and ignited a firestorm of speculation about Diddy's sexuality. But this was just the beginning. 50 Cent continued to make Diddy the epicenter of his gay jokes for years to come. In 2014, he took to social media to post a photo of Diddy alongside Rick Ross and Steve Stout, strategically creating an impression that Diddy could be gay. The photo was accompanied by a caption that further fueled the rumors, leaving fans and critics alike questioning Diddy's sexual orientation. Three years later, 50 Cent once again stirred the pot by circulating a photo of Diddy with Lee Daniels, a prominent gay filmmaker. The photo, shared on social media platforms, added another layer to the narrative that Diddy might be fruity, as 50 Cent had previously suggested. These instances of public mockery and insinuation by 50 Cent only served to intensify the controversies surrounding Diddy's sexuality. It is important to note that 50 Cent's comments and jokes about Diddy being gay should be taken with a grain of salt. While they have undoubtedly fueled the speculation, it is crucial to separate fact from fiction and recognize that these remarks are part of a larger narrative within the hip-hop industry. 50 Cent's provocative nature and penchant for stirring controversy have made him a lightning rod for attention, and his comments about Diddy's sexuality should be viewed in that context. However, it is undeniable that jokes and comments like these have a lasting impact. They perpetuate stereotypes and contribute to a culture of speculation and judgment. The constant questioning of Diddy's sexuality based on these remarks has created an environment where his personal life is under constant scrutiny. Music has always been a powerful medium for self-expression, and sometimes it can spark conversations and raise questions about an artist's personal life. Such is the case with Diddy's collaboration with independent artist Blood Orange on the song Hope. This track, along with its accompanying music video, has given rise to speculation and curiosity about Diddy's sexuality. In the music video for Hope, directed by Blood Orange himself, we are presented with a series of visually striking scenes that leave an indelible impression. One particular moment that has caught the attention of viewers is the portrayal of two men embracing passionately. This intimate display of affection has led many to wonder about Diddy's own experiences and inclinations. In 2020, Sean Combs took to his verified Instagram account to share a video that would spark a flurry of reactions and comments from fans. In the video, Diddy opened up about the challenges he faced in the previous year, describing it as a crazy time. While many fans offered words of support and encouragement, others took the opportunity to speculate 
speculate about Diddy's sexuality, urging him to come out and live his truth. These comments, which were rooted in assumptions and stereotypes, further fueled the ongoing speculation about Diddy's sexuality. The notion that someone's mental health struggles could be directly linked to their sexual orientation is not only unfounded, but also perpetuates harmful stereotypes. It is important to remember that mental health issues, such as depression, can affect individuals regardless of their sexual orientation. Diddy's openness about his battle with depression should be commended, as it helps to destigmatize mental health struggles. However, it is crucial to separate discussions about mental health from assumptions about someone's sexual orientation. Diddy's decision to not directly address rumors surrounding his sexuality has only added to the speculation. Some argue that his silence is a form of confirmation, while others believe that it is his right to keep his personal life private. Regardless, it is essential to respect an individual's autonomy and recognize that their sexuality is their own business. The controversies surrounding Diddy's sexuality have persisted for years, fueled by various factors and speculations. From the jokes made by rapper 50 Cent to Diddy's collaboration with Blood Orange and the song Hope and his public statements about battling depression, these elements have contributed to the ongoing discussions about his sexual orientation. It is important to approach these discussions with sensitivity and respect, recognizing that an individual's sexuality is their own personal journey. While the rumors and speculations may continue, it is crucial to remember that Diddy's sexuality is ultimately his own business. The focus should be on celebrating his contributions to the music industry and respecting his right to privacy. Diddy's History of Allegations Sean Diddy Combs, a prominent figure in the music industry, has faced a myriad of controversies and allegations throughout his career spanning several decades. Despite attempts to rebrand himself as Brother Love and shift the focus to his music and entrepreneurial ventures, the shadow of his troubled past continues to loom large. In 1991, tragedy struck when Combs co-promoted a celebrity basketball game and concert at City College of New York. The event turned disastrous, resulting in the death of nine people and injuries to 29 others. The incident raised questions about inadequate security measures, leading to a 67-page report titled A Failure of Responsibility. While Combs faced lawsuits from the victims' families, he eventually settled the cases by 2000, marking the beginning of a turbulent journey. Diddy's association with Death Row Records co-founder Marion Suge Knight turned tumultuous after the fatal shooting of Jake Robles outside an Atlanta nightclub. The incident fueled the violent rivalry between Death Row and Bad Boy, with accusations pointing at Combs' camp. Despite denying involvement, Combs found found himself entangled in a web of controversy, setting the stage for further tumultuous episodes. In 1998, a creative dispute escalated into violence when Combs, accompanied by two men, attacked music executive Steve Stout. The altercation stemmed from an unauthorized version of the music video for Hate Me Now, featuring scenes portraying Combs as Jesus Christ being crucified. Charged with second-degree assault and criminal mischief, Combs underwent anger management classes, exposing another facet of his tumultuous personality. The turn of the Millennium brought another violent episode, this time at Club New York. An altercation involving Combs, his signee Jamal Shine Barrow, and a clubgoer named Matthew Scar Allen escalated into gunfire, leaving three people injured. Combs faced multiple weapons charges, but shocking courtroom revelations and a high-profile trial resulted in his acquittal. The incident left a stain on Combs' public image, foreshadowing more controversies to come. The 2013 MTV VMA's After Party witnessed a reported scuffle between Diddy and rapper J. Cole. Conflicting reports emerged, with some alleging that the altercation was triggered by inappropriate comments directed at Combs and his then-girlfriend, Cassie. While both parties denied any significant physical violence, the incident added another layer to Diddy's history of altercations within the industry. In December 2014, a reported altercation between Diddy and Drake unfolded outside Live Nightclub during Basel Weekend. The dispute, allegedly over the rights to a beat, escalated into physical violence, with Diddy allegedly throwing punches at Drake. Despite conflicting accounts and denials, the incident underscored scored Diddy's propensity for clashes, especially in high-stakes situations. In June 2015, Combs found himself in another controversial situation, this time at UCLA, where he clashed with assistant football coach Sal Alosi. The altercation reportedly centered around Alosi's treatment of Combs' son, Justin Combs, during a football practice. The incident involved a kettlebell and accusations of assault, although the legal system opted not to file charges against Combs. In 2019, Diddy faced personal allegations when his ex-girlfriend Gina Hewing accused him of physical abuse 
abuse during their five-year relationship. Huynh detailed disturbing incidents, including stomping on her stomach and punching her in the head. The claims shed light on the darker aspects of Diddy's personal life, bringing domestic abuse allegations to the forefront. The most recent controversy involves a federal lawsuit filed by Cassie Ventura against Diddy, which includes graphic claims of sexual assault, physical abuse, and disturbing allegations of sexual exploitation. The legal battle, marked by a settlement in November 2023, raised questions about the nature of their relationship and the validity of the accusations. In a shocking turn of events, a former Syracuse University College student filed a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of drugging, raping, and recording her in 1991. The suit further alleges that Diddy showed the recorded assault to others, perpetuating the trauma for the victim. Diddy's denial and the dismissal of the allegations as a money grab only intensified the gravity of the situation. In an unfortunate escalation, a second anonymous accuser filed a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging sexual assault alongside singer-songwriter Aaron Hall. The suit claims that the assault occurred in 1990 or 1991, further compounding the mounting legal challenges Diddy faced. Adding another layer to the legal quagmire, a third Jane Doe filed a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging gang rape in 2003 when she was 17. The disturbing details of the incident, involving drugs, alcohol, and coercion, painted a troubling picture of events at Diddy's Daddy's House studio. The allegations further fueled public outrage and skepticism surrounding Diddy's actions. In a significant development, Grammy-winning singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd published an open letter, corroborating Cassie's claims of abuse and exploitation. Redd's detailed account of witnessing Diddy's verbally abusive behavior and involvement in what Cassie referred to as a freak-off added a new dimension to the unfolding narrative. The fallout from the mounting allegations extended to Diddy's professional ventures, with Hulu canceling a reality show centered around Diddy and his family. The decision reflected the industry's response to the controversies, mirroring the distancing of multiple brands and companies from the hip-hop mogul. In January 2024, Diddy reached a settlement with liquor giant Diageo, ending a legal battle over joint ownership of the tequila brand De Leon. The settlement signaled an attempt to resolve business disputes amid the growing storm of allegations, showcasing the impact of the controversies on Diddy's professional relationships. The latest development in the saga involves a $30 million lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who collaborated with Diddy on The Love Album. The lawsuit details explicit allegations of sexual assault, claiming that Diddy subjected Jones to misconduct throughout the album's production. The lawsuit implicates others, including Diddy's son Justin, in a web of disturbing accusations that further tarnish Diddy's public image. Despite the myriad controversies and disturbing allegations that have marked Diddy's tumultuous journey, it is undeniable that he remains a significant asset to the music industry. His contributions as a music mogul, entrepreneur, and influential figure cannot be overlooked. Diddy has played a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of hip-hop and popular music, with a successful career spanning decades. However, the continuous emergence of new claims, lawsuits, and allegations ensures that he is consistently under the scrutiny of the public eye. The dichotomy of Diddy's musical legacy and the persistent controversy surrounding him underscores the complex nature of his public persona, leaving many to grapple with the question of separating the artist from his tumultuous personal history. This was all from our side. Thank you for staying with us. If you enjoy our content, our newest videos are just a click away.